uh, I haven't got them into bronze, but they're ready to go. So I can't ring them. But it's going to be very interesting to ring them because inside there's what strikes the bell inside is what they call a clapper. And when it hits, this is a better example, when it hits one side of the eagle is where it hits. It hits here on the thin side. This is thin. If I go 180 degrees across, it hits the thick side. So this is going to have two tones. And they're going to be moving in and out. I don't know what they're going to sound like, but it's like Tim's. I'm looking forward to it too. Earth, water, air, and fire. This is what helped me find out where this form is coming from. Where is it in, in, the, in, in the real world? Where does it manifest? We have the geometry, but where does it manifest? So what Rudolf Sonner said is that geometry is right in between the idea and manifestation. Okay, it took me a couple years to do this to find out where it came from because I found out that it comes from this process. I hope I don't drop this. But this is a tetrahedron, which I'm holding at the top, turning in a cube all the way to an octahedron at the bottom. Now, geometry has never been done this way before. They've never taken a form, put it in another form, and spin it. And that's what I did. I spun it. And spinning it is water. Now, there's a whole bunch of forms out there that this has never been done with before that can be brought into manifestation. Remember that all the, all the platonic forms that have been done before were all done with truncations. They took the form and they cut corners off. Then they took those corners and they cut those off. This didn't happen this way. This came through a vortex. There are two circles in this form, and here they are. Now we're getting into the art part of the science, spiritual science. So there is a star, okay, that meets those two circles. And how did I do this? I took the bottom circle that's in the form, and I made a pentagram. Now the reason I made a pentagram is because the first geometry I showed you showed a pentagram. I extended the lines of the pentagram up like this, and then where they crossed, they went up to the top circle. I didn't do that. I just put the pentagram and drew them up. Then I thought, I wonder what's between those points there. So I made circles. You can see them. And it divided the second circle into seven perfectly. Perfect. And they say you can't do that with seven. And I didn't do it. It came from the five. So I want to know what this is. because. They're all around here, and they're all around here, except the only time they really become this star is where they join. So I thought, what is this? So, you know, I look at things three-dimensionally and then two-dimensionally, and the reason I do that is because three-dimension, some people stay away from three dimensions because they want to stay with the second, but if you don't understand the third, you can't understand where the second's coming from. So you go and cross a threshold of some kind, and you find out that you're in the second dimension, and you didn't understand the third dimension, and you may be a little lost. So I found out that this is a lens. And now I have these little cones. And these cones come about because I took this and I put it into water. I spun it. So if you spin this star, it turns into this little guy here. So this is a lens. So I tried to relate that to a, a lens picture that I had, which I don't see right now. But uh, I have. Uh -huh. Here they are. Here are the two circles. So these are the two circles that I just showed you. Yeah, there's three circles here. But the one I want you to think about is this one. And you'll see why I have the third one. And it's interesting, this is based on 3, 4, 5, which is what the first Gertianum was based on, 3, 4, 5. If I flip this over to find out what that lens that I showed you, this purple lens, it's exactly the lens of the human eye. There is a seeing in this form. It sees. 
and there are two cones. And so you know, and even in the, the eye, there are rods and cones. Well, that's a rod, and that's a cone. So there is something. So what's happening here that I see is this is what I see in this. I see that this form, when it moves, uh, the largest arc is the front of the lens of the eye, smaller ones behind, just like the drawing. So this is a seeing. So here we go. This is seeing in the periphery as it turns. And then when it unites and turns into this circle, it's seeing in the center. This is centric. This is peripheral. This is looking at something with a fixed gaze and an open gaze, which we need to do. And what we need to do is between the fixed gaze and the open gaze is the balance, the middle thing. And that's what this is showing here. Geometrically, forms are showing something. They're talking to us. They're, t they're asking us to investigate them. Where does the form come from? Please excuse me for just a little bit, to turn a little bit of math. OK, so if I show these two together to you, they're the same angle, aren't they? Now, what angle do you think that is? That's 45, isn't it? That's root 2. That is root 2 that you're looking at. But this one is looking at it two-dimensionally. We can't just look two-dimensionally. We have to look three-dimensionally because that's root 3. This isn't. So this is root 3, which is the center of two circles in the middle. And when you put that into a cube, perfectly, you don't have to measure a thing, you go from corner to corner, root 3, three-dimensionally root 3, not two circles. OK, now I'm going to jump right into this. And so what I need you to do is to remember, you can look at this in two ways. You can look at it artistically. You can look for the beauty. And if you don't really like that part, you're, if you want to be mathematically, then look at it mathematically. Because math is in here, and also there's beauty. And what you need to do is find the middle between those two, between math and art, spiritual science. So I found out that this is really, there's root 3. See that root 3? Root 3 isn't 45 degrees, but it looks like it's 45 degrees, doesn't it? It looks like it's 45 degrees from the top, from the front, and from the side. Root 3 is right in the middle between above and below, right and left, and forward and backwards, right in the middle. And root 3 is exactly 36 degrees. That's not 45. It's 36 because it's three-dimensionally. I'll put it back in to show you. There it is. Root 3 is 36 degrees. The original form, this angle is 36 degrees from here to here. This is 72, and this is 60. Now, those are really important numbers, and I'll show you why. Because I found out that where this form is, where it's coming from, I don't know where the red one is, but I have a blue one just in case I lost it. Where is this form coming from? It's in the cube. Now I have it organic because I put it into a bubble. This is the geometry of a vortex, a bell. I went to a bell expert, a Russian bell expert. He says, we've never known. I, I showed him this. He, about, not, he just about fell off his chair. I said, what's wrong? And he says, we've never known the geometry of the bell. It's never been known. It's a secret. Well, I did make seven-sided form out of seven sticks, and there it was. <laughs> this is a vortex that is slowing down. And this part right here slows down faster than this part. I made a vortex generator about this high, couldn't bring it. This vortex generates this big vortex. I can put this form into it, and the vortex disappears. So this is formative forces come to rest. So the discovery that I found out, that this is the geometry behind the human heart. 
So they're going to say, this, this guy's a complete nut. What I need you to do is to look at well, the facts that I've found that could indicate that this may be the facts, that this could be the human heart, the geometry behind it. So the first thing I did is I took this cube with root 3, all the doctors say that the heart sits in the body at 45 degrees. And there it is. Front view of the heart, spine. Side view of the heart, 45 degrees. Top of the heart, 45 degrees. They're right. But they don't know anything about root 3. OK. So I took the x-rays. Where did I put that little cube? Ah. I took the x-rays. I put the front of the heart x-ray here, top here, and OK, here's the side, the front, and the top. It fits exactly into root 3, exactly. And yet, when you look at it, the doctors say at 45 degrees, they're right. But not really, because the heart doesn't sit in our body 45 degrees this way, 45 degrees this way, and this way. It sits at root 3. So now, how come the heart is on one side more than it is on the other? That's because the cube with the heart in it is exactly in the middle of the body. So there is a super sensible cube that the form is coming in from. Okay, and there it is. I put the cube exactly in the middle. This is a real bonus, plaster of Paris. But the, the cube sits exactly in the middle, and the heart sits in the middle of the cube at root 3, and that's why it's off to the left, and it's exactly how it appears when you look at the heart in the body. Why is it that shape, and why does it sit in our body that way? OK. Here's right off the internet. You can go to it under beating heart, and you'll, you'll bring these images up. I don't know where I put that heart that, uh, here it is. Look at the images of the left ventricle. The doctors don't know why it's this shape. The reason it is is because this is a break. The human heart is a break. It's slowing down it's faster in the center or the apex of the heart. Okay, and the outside here, where the atrium comes in, is spinning faster. Now it's not spinning, it's taking the form through spinning. This is the right ventricle. And most doctors just cut that off and it falls on the floor because it's like a napkin. It's a very little thin muscle, so they never studied it. I studied it. And I found out that that heart, when I put it in the vortex generator that I have, that I made, it looks like this. The blue is the water that's running around this form. Exactly. All I did was take the form, the bell, and I put plaster of Paris that was water resistant, and I kept building it up until the vortex was gone. Now, to get that form to run around there, which is kind of the sun and the moon that we have in us, to get that form, I had to put this exactly at 36 degrees before this happened. Bef at, at 25, it was kind of distorted, and then at 36 exactly, I have a protractor on the top of my vortex generator. That's the form I got. And what's interesting about that form is that here is the cross section of the human heart. Okay, they do not know why it takes that shape. And the reason it does is because that's the water, the way the etheric moves, the way the water moves around the strong vortex. There are two vortexes. The human heart has two vortexes. And this one is the weaker, which is it's not weaker. It's just allowing the blue blood to go into the lungs. And what it does is it doesn't, you can take both valves out and the, and the, the blood goes to the uh, lungs without the valves. I mean, the person has to not be too active, but he doesn't need those valves because this is flowing, just like my vortex generator shows, right up into the lungs. It's not pumping, it's flowing. Now, what happens is that I 
yeah, see there's a triangle in here. Remember I told you that there's a triangle here that when it spins there's a two holes. So we have to look at the geometry of the human heart from the top and if we do that, here's the top of the heart. This is the, uh, this is where the valve is, the mitrid valve, that's where the blood is coming out of the lungs and then it leaves here to the aorta. Yeah. So what is the geometry of this? This is what I'm interested in and sure enough, that's the geometry of the top of the heart. And this part right here is the part, this design right here. Remember, there's a divine designer behind this human heart. That's not chance. So this triangle, which comes from the edges here, this is where all the energy is, which causes the other circle. If we take that and put it in the same place and see that inside the heart, that's why that shape is triangular. There we go. Here's the geometry in the cube. How do you make geometry move? The geometry of the human heart, I found that the inside of the human heart, okay, also has a lawful geometry that's coming off a prolate or a rhombohedron. And, you know, what is that? Well, it's a lawful inner shape inside, just like I did with the, originally, I found that there was a cube in there. There is a form in there that takes on the form of the chamber that the blood comes into. And between that chamber and the outside of the heart, there are muscles. And they're thick, they're big. I said, doctor, I want to ask me questions. Well, if, if that's not a pump, then what's that muscle? How come it's so thick? From my research, I found out that that muscle is so thick because it holds the blood in. That's not pushing it out, it's holding it in. It's holding the blood in. 50% of your blood remains in your heart constantly. Only 50% goes out. Okay, so those muscles are holding it back. Remember, the heart is a brake. It's slowing the blood down, and it slows it down to at an average of 72 times a minute. This is 72 degrees. The geometry should fit things. This is 72 degrees. This is 36. The 60, here is the way the lungs are. All the lungs and there are all the artery or the veins that go out, all the little chambers that go out into the heart at 60 degrees. They bifurcate at 60 degrees. I don't have much time. Okay, so I'm going to really move. This is the geometry of the heart inside the heart. This is both the inside and the outside. And what happens, this is the way the heart moves. The outside of the heart only twists a little bit, but the inside twists a whole bunch. So how am I going to make that twist? Because this is what it looks like. This is how much it twists. This is the real important part. I'd like to get this as soon as I can. I've got so many charts up here that you can't see. But the heart, according to the scientists, moves at 40 degrees. It twists at 40 degrees on the inside, the outside hardly at all. So how am I going to do that with geometry? Well, I figured it out that what I could do is I could twist that, and there it is. And now the, the heart is empty, here it's full. And then it's empty, and it's full. But 40 degrees is only about that much. The heart can go like that. It can go another 20 degrees. When it goes to 20 degrees, that f it forms a chamber. And that chamber looks like this. That's the shape of the new chamber that's inside the left ventricle. Well, that cube is always in my way, isn't it? No? That's the fifth chamber. Rudolf Steiner says that once the human being can do this, then he can see Christ in the etheric. And why can't we make our hearts go another 20 degrees? It only goes 40. How come we can't go another 20? And that's a good question. Why, what is it that we can do to make our heart go another 20 degrees? Remember that part of the muscles in the heart are voluntary. 
This is voluntary. Our fingers are voluntary. That means we can control our heart. And what do we have to do? I'll leave you that question. What do we have to do to change something that we do or don't do to allow that chamber to come in? If I take a drop of milk and I drop that drop of milk into a pan, that milk will take on that vortex. And milk and blood have the same consistency. Seventh century of Christ on the cruci on the being crucified, one guy on the side's got a spear and the other guy has a cup. And right in the middle of this Christ, this is the seventh century in Spain, is a cube. Here's the milk. Well, it wasn't hard to do. All I had to do was take the profile of that milk, which is the same consistency of blood. And I allowed that blood to support what I think. I haven't been able to present everything, but I got a little bit out. The heart. And the heart is in the shape of a bell. It is a chalice. Our heart is a chalice. It is a cup. And what's different about this cup here is this objective. This isn't a subjective grill cup. So what is coming out? What, what is it that everybody says it's searching for the grail? Yeah? It's in you. And the most important thing is not to have Noah sitting in a cube. You notice that he sat in a cube? That's because that's earth. But also there's a cube inside us. And that cube, here's the example of it. There is a little cube inside the middle of our heart. And Rudolf Steiner says that all of our karma is in a little box inside our body. And Rudolf Steiner says that in the astral, there are bells going all over the place very, very fast in the astral. And that is us looking for parents and for the right environment. And that little cube is objectively seen now in the geometry of the human heart. And that cube, this is the point of that cube, is in this new chamber. Now the most important thing about the grill cup is what's coming out of it. Not what's going in. So now I have made this what's coming out of it. What's coming out of it is a flame of enthusiasm. Or our hands in prayer. Or an open heart. There is an open space in there. And that space takes on the same form as that chamber. And inside that chamber, on each side, there is the red blood and the blue blood. And what joins it is peach blossom tourmaline. And tourmaline is the Christ stone. And it's joining the red and the blue. That is how we have to deal with the other. And in the very center and the top, at exactly 90 degrees opposite, is green tourmaline. That's the Christ. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.